Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the GKC Show. Uh, I am Mark the Block Fisher Lombardi, and uh, Sam Hodel Your Nuts Whitaker is here <laughs> with us again as co-host. Your nuts, my nuts, these nuts, whatever yeah, nuts. All just, nuts. Just go something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're we're fresh off the heels. I don't say want to say fresh off the heels because it was yesterday. Uh, but there was a GKC meeting, uh, and uh, Alec uh, kind of let us off there and. And uh, we had Kent there as well, which was nice. He's the uh, head of product. So it was great to see him out and speaking. And I think he had a lot to bring to the conversation. And I'm excited about uh, some of the stuff that uh, he was talking about. But I'm just going to do a quick little recap after everybody likes and subscribes and, Smash it. Smash it. <laughs> and it does all that stuff. So a uh, quick little recap. Uh, so on the marketing side, they're improving discoverability, which is good. Uh, I think that that's something that maybe us as a community might be able to do as grassroots stuff as well. Um, I think there's definitely some opportunities within the, the GKC lounge for us to be doing some more meme type stuff, just, you know, just drumming up general interest of, uh, of the project out there in the public uh and he said they mentioned a couple of times about them getting ready for public release um so it sounds like that that might be you know four to six or eight weeks out in the future um you know i don't want to put a stamp on it but it seemed like that they were getting to something like that um and then they did kind of a recap of the show that we did with may um but a little bit more specific to metamask wallets um, where they're talking about protecting NFTs, uh, they talked about revoke cash, um, uh, and then do not click on approvals and say, you know, approve all stuff. Uh, and there was just some really good basic background. Go back and, and read the notes on that in the GKC. Um, where do they have that in the GKC? It's just... Uh, I think it's on your uh, call recap or recap notes or something like that. Yeah. So definitely go look through those if you need some best practices, but uh, there's some good stuff there. Um, they did mention that there's going to be some major changes to the user experience. Um, changes. Yes, major changes here. Um, and then uh, we're going to be focusing more on on-chain interactions. I don't know if that's necessarily stuff that's all going to be logged as transactions on-chain that we're doing, or, or I don't know specifically what they meant by that. Um, signing in is going to be more, uh, the whole thing is going to be more profile-centric. Uh, I do like that. I like the idea of kind of moving away from the Genesis key necessarily being the thing that gets you into NFT.com. I imagine that soon we'll probably see some kind of uh, sale on blank profiles where people can start, you know, just buying a profile and having a profile on NFT.com. Um, and then let's see, what else do we talk about? Not we, but they. Um, Oh, on-chain resolver. This was uh, something that I thought was really interesting because I wound up asking them a question based on some stuff that they said there, because on-chain resolver is going to allow people to put NFTs into uh, their own profile that aren't within their wallet or for them to be available in a collection of you know, NFTs that were granted permission to be uh, within a profile or on a page. And then I had like this aha flash moment where I kind of saw myself logging into NFT.com with my profile, taking a look at all of my NFTs and then saying, huh, I wonder who else owns this NFT that I own and having it bring me to a page that showed everybody on NFT.com with a profile that also has that same NF, not that same NFT, but within that same collection. And then the social media aspect to me was maybe there's a news feed or a thread or something that's attached to that where people can communicate with each other, almost like a discord, but an impromptu discord that's tied together by the fact that everybody, you know, owns one of the pieces in this collection. Yeah, I think that's interesting because one of the things that I noticed on the redesign of the website is that <clears throat> when they they're referring to the platform it's a couple in a couple of different spaces it's referred to as a social network so it's not a marketplace it's not a you know yeah. <clears throat> gallery or it's a show, social network and that's really interesting because it's such a um 
you know, as the NFT space evolves, uh, you know, obviously you don't spend the money to get the domain nft.com and all the money that immutable holdings is put into building the pro process just to be a gallery for people to right. show their beliefs or, or whatever. Um, so obviously they have a, um, a view towards what we all know NFTs will be, which is, you know, the token gating and soul bound tokens and things like that in the future. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to call it a social network because I think that's a huge opportunity for web three to, uh, you know, be able to use whatever the, your soul bound token, or if you have your social token or whatever that is, um, and have that be kind of your, your history and your profile and your everything uh about your social history on uh, on web3 so that's really interesting yeah i i thought of it as a really it seems like they could build something that is a catalyst to better connect the people in the nft space right because essentially i kind of want to know what everybody else has that i also have right what other communities how how much in common with how much does my NFT comp collection have in common with your NFT collection? You know, are we almost like a match.com? Like how <laughs> how close do our profiles match as far as our That's taste in NFTs kind really of funny. thing? And then right again, you create social structures uh, with that, and all of a sudden you have a, a blossoming community of people who you know want to be around other like-minded people. I mean, isn't that essentially what a social network is? It's opportunity for people to get together with like-minded people and shoot the shit about stuff. Yeah, that's funny. I, uh, <laughs> I saw a meme one time that uh, said match.com should have a uh, dating site. So, you know, you could search for other people who watched 17 episodes of Supernatural in the last two days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity uh to to kind of delve into that and have you know the the brand of nft.com and again i think it's you know where we are right now with nfts is you know the um the board apes and the crypto punks and the you know all that stuff but it's just it's gonna be so much more and yeah. it's gonna have such a bigger impact and i I think I hope that's what the team is building for uh, to to get to that point. It's I mean, it's exciting. It's it can be frustrating to see yeah. things go a little slower than we would like in the meantime. But uh, but yeah, that's kind of where we are. I was uh, I was invested in a social media startup on Hedera. I won't mention the name of it um because it's gone absolutely no it, you know it's disappeared into the ether uh you know rug pull if you will uh <laughs> but there I, I in that project i got some glimpses of what is possible with social networking and nfts they had a, a very clever news feed in which in a in an in-house token which you could tip people based on what they posted. So it created this economy of information and this desire to want to put out meaningful information to the audience because you could get rewarded for what you did. And you could do the same thing with, you know, uh, I know eventually we'll have a minting tool within NFT.com, or at least it, I know it's been discussed. Uh, but, you know, within this social network, if you have an image that you want to post, you can also tokenize it and people, instead of just tipping you for it, can say, hey, you know, I want a official copy of that as well, because it's a beautiful picture of a nut against a starlit sky. I mean, it doesn't get much. <laughs> <laughs> Peanuts in spacesuits with... Uh... With speedos on, I mean, come on. Do they have? Hold on, shift to the right. Are they wear? Is that wearing a speed? Oh, there we go. Oh, we're missing most of the nut there. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I'm the star here. This is background. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I took long enough to negotiate this with my people and your people. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, good, I mean, good place. It, 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 you know, it's it, there's two ways to look at it. Number one is. There's so many uh, possibilities. There's so many different things you can do, and that's exciting. Number two is, you know, you have to temper that with, you know, let's make sure we're doing what we do very well, as opposed to trying to get too, you know, take too much of a shotgun approach.
And so if, you know, if we start with the core of, you know, here are your profiles and, or, and you can display your NFTs and here's a gallery and you can interact and things like that, that's great. But, uh, you know, it's just, we're, we're just speculating about what yeah. it's going to become. So yeah, as of right now, we only have the very basic tools from which the foundation of this thing is going to be built. But I do think that the profile is going to remain very centric to whatever it is gets gets built out in the future um i i know i'm excited about being able to put other stuff into my collection page not my collection page my profile page that aren't nfts that i own um you know because i don't have you know i have although i know i rank very high on that nf list of nfts in the <laughs> But most of those I can't even show because they're on a le they're on a layer two, so I can't even port those in and show them off, um, which is fine. But I would love so I actually have a very limited number of NFTs that I can actually show on my profile. So if I can bring in some other stuff, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's it, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how it how it all fleshes out and. Again, we're speculating, uh, but we get seemingly a little bit more information every week. So, yeah. you know, eventually we'll get there. I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of speculation too, be, about because of something that I saw today and also yesterday. Is I think yesterday as well. I'd have to go back through Twitter. But oh, you know, uh, I'm super unprofessional and plug in my computer. So, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, I think that. Or at least I feel that NF, I don't want to say, Jordan had made a couple of very positive or Hedera leaning posts on Twitter lately. And I'm wondering if we're going to see some kind of Hedera integration come sooner than later. Because I also think that there are some things with social networking that will be possible within the platform that aren't possible with Ethereum. Right. If you want to do anything like tip another user or, you know, it's just not as easy to do that on Ethereum. The costs are too high to be able to move information around like that. Um, That's really interesting that you bring that up because we were just I was just talking with uh, Alec was actually saying in the lounge earlier today about how, uh, you know, people were complaining about the gas fees today. It was like you know they wanted to do things on to test out the beta and it was like sixty dollars uh yeah. gas at one point i think they've gone down but he was saying that uh you know he can't wait for the ethereum merge to happen and i was i had just seen that's yesterday, not gonna help but, yeah i just tweeted it out <laughs> well that's not be nuts so you know copyright uh on ethereum's website ethereum.org they specifically say that with the merge Two of the misconceptions are that gas fees will be lower and that it, that speeds will or that transaction speed will be better. And they right. specifically say on their website that those are misconceptions. It's not going to happen because the merge has nothing to do with the number of validators that are out there and the speed and the gas fees are going to yeah. be pretty much the same. So if that's the case, like I said, hello future. Because for sure. So the only thing that it's to my understanding, the only thing it really does is takes the power consumption and drops that considerably. So yeah, the, they said by something like nine hundred percent. Right. So that's I, and I would imagine, right, because the 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 gas fees are technically for for ETH are an open market for the most part, right? Yeah. So if the cost to come to consensus is lowered that should over time bring down the gap right because if i'm if i if, if if all of this value that was kind of flushed down the toilet before um isn't there anymore and now all of that chunk is profit i can maybe now afford less of less of a profit and i can be a little bit more competitive with what i would accept as far as uh you know the cost to come to consensus but again their capacity isn't changing so and, and and the demand doesn't necessarily change so void of any anything else that is a catalyst to to bring those fees down then the fees will just stay there yeah and that's why i mean listen i, I maybe it'll blow everybody out of the water maybe they're just being super conservative but i've been skeptical of the merge from day one it's just it's one of those things like it's been talked about for what a year or two years now 
and the release date keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and the you know they're hedging with the what we should expect and what kind of features and improvements i don't know i think it's going to be much ado about nothing to be honest i think that and i think it's going to hurt ethereum's i think a lot of people are are investing and pumping up the price getting ready for that and i think if it launches and it's kind of like eh uh you know that'll be interesting to see how that affects the market I, I feel like they're trying to turn a blimp into a rocket ship in midair. <laughs> or or they're trying to turn a blimp into an airplane in midair, and Hedera is already a rocket ship. I mean, we talked about this before. You know? <laughs> was 19 when he created Ethereum. And it was More than I did at 19, by the way. What's that? More than I did at 19, by the way. Not me, but yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> I actually invented the Q-tip, believe it or not. Right, beautiful. I, I, was, I was like 15 at Just the time. Just living off Q-tip royalties from... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> these nuts don't pay for themselves. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was 19 when he came up with Ethereum. I mean, it was revolutionary in its time, but Ashcraft technology is just better. And yeah. there's going to be certain things that, you know, when you talk blockchain versus, versus uh, Hashgraph, I mean, a lot of people are saying... You know, they're excited about kind of the layer twos that are kind of bolted onto Ethereum that can bring down gas fees. And I, I don't know, at, at some point you're just, I, I, and for me, this is for me, you know, maybe I'm yeah. wrong, but you're so, depending on too many pieces down the road. And... So I've used, I've used Immutable X, which is a layer two that's gasless and it's good, right? It's really good. I love them. There's token troll mar marketplace that's on top of it and it's a beautiful experience. I really can't say too much of a bad thing about it other than I don't know exactly how secure it is cryptographically speaking. From right I don't I don't know how much security is given up to be able to achieve that speed um and low cost. Yeah, it's a I mean it's a question mark and um I don't know. It's just especially like when I when I saw that link uh, and I checked it out and I, I kept confirming like this is Ethereum.org. They're actually right. saying <laughs> this, right? you know, like, this is like the Onion or the web free version of the Onion. And um, no, it's interesting. And it you know it all uh, you know the hearing things about Hedera. I mean, obviously you know Jordan came from Hedera. A lot of people from the NFT.com team came from Hedera. So there's there's a lot of crossover there, but. Yeah, I think we're all excited to see that. And not only Hedera, Solana, like I want to see everything yeah. on this platform. So all this cross, all this cross chain, the more cross chain things we can see and the more things that are out there are just yeah. going to grow the real free community. Well, and speaking of cross chain, I've been using Hashport to bring some assets over from ETH into, into the Hedera world as HTS tokens to put into SaucerSwap. And it's been a really great experience. And I can see in, a, in the not too distant future that being so populated with the top 50 tokens that, that are out there, that it'll be easier to swap and play arbitrage games in saucer swap than it will be anywhere in any other DeFi playground. Um, I also understand that they're going to have some kind of NFT staking um, at some point as well. Uh, so I think that that will be interesting as well. Like if you could take the value of your NFT and stake it to a, a pool, knowing that you won't trade it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And I, I mean, honestly, down the road, like all of these things that we're talking about, like last last week, when we were talking about the wallets, I mean, 10 years from now, people are going to, you know, people who are new to who aren't in the space right now, they're going to look back at us and say, wait, you did what? You had to write down 25 words and keep them in a safety deposit box. And uh, it'll be kind of the same thing, I think, with the layer ones. Um, most of people's interactions they're not going to realize or care that they're on Hedera or that they're on Ethereum. They're just going to care that it works and right. it's doing what they need it to do. And so, you know, that's. Right. Yeah. I don't know what that cross platform architecture looks like. That is some kind of new browser or, you know, I, you know, some mega MetaMask thing that is 
that any mm -hmm. wallet any wallet can plug into because that gonna, that's what uh, i that's what one of, that's the piece that i think that's missing or the, at least the piece that i have a hard time wrapping my head around right so we want to be multi-chain within uh, or chain agnostic within nft.com but i have a hard time wrapping around my my head around the tool in which all of those wallets that i would need to interact with the different chains lives right is it a new plugin that needs to get built that you can put your eth and your hedera and your algorand and your tezos wallets into or i, I don't know because to my not the only thing i use metamask for right now is eth and polygon and i i refrain from using polygon much because i just don't like to swap back and forth between the two wallets because i'm afraid something's going to get messed up <laughs> yeah well i i mean i think that it's probably like it's probably some kind of a solution like wallet connect i mean when wallet connect came out it was such an awesome leap forward so that I know uh, wallet connect dog well yeah, wallet connect, so commercial wallet, it to me what's this so i mean basically it's you know when you're interacting somewhere and you, you need to connect a wallet you basically have your option here's metamask or wallet connect if wallet connect is kind of it's kind of like a central point where you can take trust wallet or whatever other wallet you have and connect through wallet connect so that the platform doesn't have right. to set up um, APIs to deal with all these other wallets. They just set up one with wallet connect and then wallet connect is kind of the middleman. So you can uh, plug your MetaMask wallet into wallet connect. Yeah, you can do go connection. through some, some sites. You do have to do that, but yeah, trust wallet is another big one. And, um, uh, God, I, I don't even know how many different wallets I've had over the, in the past, but uh, yeah, you just go through Wallet Connect. So I, I imagine it would be kind of a similar thing, and I'm sure people are working on it right now, but instead of just having a bunch of different wallets that interact via one chain, it's a bunch of different wallets that are on multiple chains, and you have that one single point of, of reference that every, um, yeah. every Web3 platform uh, communicates with and then you know it's just you know all the wallet stuff is going on over here i'll have to i'll have to look more into that because that's something i haven't really done due diligence on yet it's like other wallets that do right do exactly that thing aggregate other wallets into them i mean i have things like an atomic wallet that has a bunch of different wallets inside of it um but it doesn't host nfts or anything like that so everything's basically meta you know if it's nft based for me it's uh it's metamask yeah and metamask is pretty much you know it's a solid solid piece of technology right. yeah Everybody, right know. i haven't had any qualms with it yeah but i do see like again as we develop into a more, you know, if somebody's going to build a mega website out, you know, somebody's going to put a lot of money behind a new website, it's going to need to go across the whole spectrum of, right? Again, like NFT.com, they don't want to just, you know, Ethereum's a big pool, but it's, you know, there's a lot of other pools that you're excluding by, by something just being Ethereum. Uh, so and that's where I think that kind of wallet uh, aggregator almost is really something that's that's going to be a big leap when someone gets it gets it down and gets it secure and something that works well. Um, that'll be a great opportunity where, you know, especially like for metaverse um, implications. You know, if you have different skins for your avatar, and some of them are in Ethereum, some of them are on Solana, some of them are on Hedera, just to have that kind of aggregator where. You can bring all these different wallets in and you can take your hat from Ethereum. You can take your shoes from Hedera. You know, you can take your cape from Solana. And I feel like we're we're getting closer to the point where you can have a bucket of assets in diff or, or at least a bucket of assets in one wallet and be able to bring it into a metaverse space and create your own, you know, your own environment out of those. You know whether they be rugs or chairs or artwork on the wall or uh you know whatever other kind of you know 3d objects you can place into your metaverse space yeah that'll be fun and uh mm -hmm. I'm, and i'm sure it's something that nft.com is either working on or partnering with someone and that's another thing that i'm interested in and i know we're kind of coming up on time uh but it's it'll be interesting to see. We've heard a lot of talk about how Jordan's been, you know, flying around the world and setting up partnerships and things like that. But we haven't heard a lot about what they are yet. And right. that's gonna be interesting to hear 
what kind of other companies NFT.com is partnering with and, you know, what technologies they're going to leverage and what they're, you know, going to bring into to this platform. Yeah, well, interesting. I'm interested too, because there are a lot of people who are Genesis key holders that are pretty high profile people who really haven't come out <laughs> too much and said much <laughs> since maybe the launch day or days before the launch day or something like that. Um, but there were a whole lot of whole pro profile people uh, who were involved. And I'm, again, interested to see when, you know, a, a public facing beta is available, if some of those people start to come out and have something to offer or say or. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I guess I thought that the when the public release goes, I, I I guess I just always assumed in my head that it was going to be the, the once the marketplace was tested, that was going to be the public release. And I'm not entirely sure about not that. Sure that I yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that the marketplace isn't something that's going to be pushed down uh, down the road a little bit. Yeah. I don't, I guess, and I also as as long as we soon have the ability to make a sale within the platform, I don't know that the marketplace is necessarily something that I need to have happen soon. But if right, if there's some kind of social network with a news feed and I can post my NFT into it and it's for sale within that news feed and somebody goes by and says, oh, that's cool. I want to buy that. Like if that's possible first before a marketplace, then I'm cool with that. But there needs to be some kind of vision for how people uh, monetize their um, existence in it, because to be honest, People are going to need, really want to monetize it because they're putting an investment into either have a profile name or a key or or something like that. So I think that that it, again, just being a place where you go and look at NFTs isn't going to be enough. It needs to be a place where where some kind of market activity is is taking place. Yeah, and hopefully something that where we can kind of leverage uh <clears throat> leverage infrastructure from nft.com to build out applications on our profiles so um you know mm -hmm. kind of have just like the basic wallet connect wallet connecting things and um you know basics of a marketplace and things where you can kind of <clears throat> imagining where you can kind of take these apis and use them for uh you know to build out your own um, application so i hope so anyway yeah, that would be really cool to be able to connect to an, <clears throat> a metaverse provider where all your assets could be seamlessly transitioned into into that space. Or while you're in that metaverse space, if you click on an asset, it brings you, you know, it, it pulls an NFT.com API, which will allow you to make that purchase off of NFT.com, but within that metaverse space. Yeah, and there's precedent for that. I mean, within the Solana um, NFT community, they have a whole <clears throat> library of APIs for game <clears throat> gamification and things like that that people can just draw on for their NFTs. So uh, there, there's, there's definitely definitely yeah. it's happening now. I think it's a little just going to be a little more flushed out on NFT.com. I would like to. Uh, so you do you have much ex experience with Solana? Uh no, not personally. Just I've I'm I've working with and talking to some people who yeah. are launching projects on Solana, just people that I've met. If uh, you, have heard about it. A shout, just audience, if you're listening, <laughs> if you're still tuned in <laughs> close to the 30 minute mark. Um, if yeah, if you're a Tezos person or a Solana person or an Algorand person who's a part of NFT.com and you would like your voice to be heard and to maybe tell us a little bit about how things are happening on your blockchain or distributed ledger of choice. Uh, we would love to have you on the show. So feel free to comment below, or if you're in the GKC, shoot us a, a message in the GKC lounge. Um, and yeah, smash like buttons, make comments, uh, tear us apart, be ruthless and, uh, or at least Sam, tell them what you really think about us nuts. And, uh, <laughs> Yes, but that's, that's all I got for today, unless you got something yeah. else. <laughs> now, that's about it. But we do have a big show next week. Uh, we're going to be talking with uh, <clears throat> a friend of mine who's a professor at NYU and the Fashion Institute of Technology. Uh, we're going to be talking about women in Web3, nice. uh, because that's a very yeah. underserved and underrepresented community and something that 
that is an issue with Web3 um, and something that needs to change. Uh, so she's really been on kind of the forefront of not only bringing Web3 to her students, I had before a lot of people, but uh, yeah, a woman in the industry who's really, really kicking ass and taking names. So that'll be a fun one and hopefully, hopefully very productive for everybody. I'm looking forward to it. And if you have subscribed to the channel, you'll get a notification when it comes out next week. Exactly. <laughs> have a good one. See you all on the other side.